question is, can Solana actually take on Ethereum in a big way and maybe even replace it? We're going to dive into that today. My name is Paul Barron. Welcome back to TechPath. Thanks for tuning in. As you guys know, we cover a lot of things on crypto here, as well as EV, AI, and many other forward-facing tech topics. Today, I want to dive in deeper on the Solana and Ethereum model that is occurring. I should say, I should say model, the struggle that may be occurring between Solana and Ethereum. Before we jump into, I want to jump over to Coin Market Cap, kind of see where the market is standing. As of today, we've got a 1.5 trillion uh, market cap, and of course, you can kind of see the volume a little low right now. Bitcoin dominance still holding in at 45.2, which is excellent, and Bitcoin's price holding in at almost 37, 38. Thousand with Ethereum falling quite a bit in the last uh, 48 hours we've seen because this was up around 2600 here this week. So the key here, I think that a lot of people are looking at when you look at Solana and kind of that's the, the future of what Solana has is can it replace or does it have enough infrastructure in place to take on Ethereum? And many people are looking at this as a potential. I want to jump to a story before I do. Let's jump over to Trade the Chain and just take a quick look at Solana, which has, I believe, fallen out of the top 10. Let's jump onto there, zoom up a little bit, show the seven day activity here. And you can kind of see this, this coin still is kind of flatlining in terms of both sentiment and price. Uh, definitely on the move just in the last day on a downward trend. Think so, uh, I think this is in general with all coins right now, which have had some pretty uh, big struggles here o over the past three days, for sure. Let's jump to the story, though. This is from Forbes that basically is talking about Solana raising, rumored to be raising a $450 million round to build an Ethereum killer. So again, this is pretty amazing in the sense when you look at what they're doing. Here, example is a leading Ethereum challenger. Solana could be making a big play to become the preferred blockchain uh, for decentralized applications such as DeFi and NFT offerings. If, they, if the rumors are correct, this could reach a $450 million. This half a billion bucks right here could be true. So we've heard from both Solana representatives who didn't confirm, but certainly did not deny. This is kind of where it's moving. And you look at what they're talking about. This information wasn't shared by our team. We've asked Decrypt to redact, but they refused. This is kind of what happens in the crypto space when these things get out. So I'm very intrigued by where this might be going with both so and what Solana's strategy is too, in terms of how they are looking to, one, bring on new partners. And, and we'll look at their ecosystem here in a minute. I think you'll be impressed with where they're going. The other thing, this was a piece by the information um, I don't know if you guys have ever uh, been to the information. It's a great uh, service uh, or platform by Jessica Lesson, who does a great job, former Silicon Valley uh, you know, editor. And they, they really kind of break it down into a few things. And this was a Q&A that they did with um, the founder of uh, and CEO, Anatoly Yakovenko, who is the chief operating officer or the CEO and founder of Solana. And they had some interesting things in here. And one of them that I thought was really kind of identifying is, and there's, there's some key things here, okay? One of the big rivals, obviously being Solana, did just rate 314 million through a private token sale. This was Andreessen Horowitz uh, and Polychain Capital. So this is huge to me, because this is Silicon Valley getting in in a big way inside Solana and really kind of taking, I think, what could be a huge move into the next layer for where they're going. So here was a basic you know, model that they asked, how'd you pull this off? in your recent uh, token sale. Basically, we've never raised any massive rounds that our competitors have. So they're comparing already in the sense that they're under capitalized and have nothing but blue sky and open water ahead of them. So that's a good thing. We're never starving at the point of failure, but we are always hungry because there was always uh, less than 18 months of runway. That's another thing that I think a lot of these guys are looking for as they're doing these startup DeFi and uh, blockchain projects is really being able to maintain, because remember these developers are expensive and they take a lot, whether, whether you're doing a, because uh, I think a lot of projects start, you know, first on contract basis, but then they start to develop in a, a core team and that's where the costs get in there. So Andreessen Horowitz, much like what they do on a lot of VC funded projects, jumps into this and I think in a big way. They also asked, um, asked him, 
What do you think about you guys being kind of labeled as the Ethereum killer? And how do you feel about that? And he pretty much said, hey, listen, we've had our sights on bigger dreams. Um, so see the deck for Solana it said it's been, you know, it's a blockchain NASDAQ speed. Uh, the idea is running central limit order uh, books on chain, which is, wasn't necessarily a targeting Ethereum, but it was targeting the financial institutions, which is DeFi. And I think that's where the cross starts to bear. In, in terms of Solana and why they potentially are going to be hitting in this uh, area. The other thing is gaming and uh, a way to get DeFi introduced to the general population. That's another thing. So I think he's already on this boat that this is a potential opportunity. And I think if this happens, there's going to be some traditional capital markets that are start, going to start moving into this space as well. And then if you look at, you know, kind of just in general, what their strategy is overall, it's a pretty, it's a pretty cool uh, program. And if you look at their overall uh, program, and I'll show you Solana Beach, if you've never been over there on that website, kind of gives a dashboard of what uh, projects and what kind of programs they've got going and kind of the status of everything. So, and it's a cool thing. But here was one, what are some obstacles for Solana and DeFi in general? And this was the big one. It, and it's just the capacity to educate people. And I think that's the main obstacle that I talk about a lot here on the show is the faster path to a billion users is pretty much it. We've seen how fast, he said, we've seen how fast how technology can grow and penetrate most of humanity, if not all. It's just really just a matter of time before I think all of this, being blockchain technology, starts to invade the primary. It's kind of like the open web did. When you think about the World Wide Web, what was happening in AOL and kind of those closed gardens in the, in the mid-1990s. And when the open web really kind of to flourish, the track upwards was absolutely dynamic because you had so many companies and businesses that started to build on the open web. And this is very similar. Web 3.0 really is kind of what this is being called. And I think when you have that kind of uh, adoption opportunity, being at the right place at the right time is very critical. And that is what I'm talking about with Solana because they are at the right place at the right time. They haven't went in too early with being able to get uh, liquid and get funding and also be able to capitalize on these token sales. So that's another thing. Are they at the right time, at the right space? Because remember a lot of these projects started back in 2013, 2017. They're mature, but they're finding also where the holes are in the projects. So they're having to fix them in a time where maybe they need to be able to ramp up awareness because awareness is going to be the biggest thing, as he mentioned here. And I think if they have, Solana may win this just because of the fact that they're in the right place at the right time with the right tech and the right pocketbook to be able to accelerate education. And that's going to be the key with blockchain in general. If you look also on the emerging ecosystem, this is uh, kind of where I think Solana can really kind of play into this. And uh, this was a Medium post. Basically, it's known for its high-performance blockchain, which can support 50,000 TPS, transactions per second, without sharding. And uh, sharding is kind of interesting. It's um, kind of what the, the term means is what it says. It's taking one thing and basically splitting it up into a, a whole bunch of parts for the valuation of each part coming back to the sum of the central part. Um, but they're doing it without that capabilities. So that's kind of a big innovation that basically they created. And a multitude of tools, uh, tools have already been built as a part of Solano's ecosystem with partners and characteristics. Solano offers a variety of attractive value propositions in DeFi. Big deal. For example, they did the wormhole bridge, which allows users to transfer about value between Ethereum and Solana, which is kind of cool. Turning ERC-20 tokens into Solano corresponding SPL standard, which is a different span standard than ERC. Uh, and that said, we figured out it would be a great time to find out how the DAP and the DeFi systems uh, are going to be getting along. And I think that's where this all kind of plugs together is that, Solana, remember, all this stuff is somewhat interoperable, operable, which is much like the open web, back to that kind of um, comparison and metaphor. And I think this is one of those things. If with all this cash, you have a great developer team at the right place at the right time, and you've seen what hasn't worked for the last five years in blockchain. And now we're at a period in which we have an absolute gold rush occurring, whether it's through DeFi, you've got even guys like Michael Saylor who are now re reconsidering Ethereum and rethinking it. 
there's a lot of people that are moving in this direction, including structured capital, institutional money, all those things. So I think the alpha dogs in the race are going to be the ones that really kind of jump to that next level. I want to jump down here also on this same story. What makes Solana so interesting on these projects? Obviously, the, the TPS, it, they're huge. In March 2020, in a test lab conditions, they did 111,000 transactions per second. That was in May 2020. And the maximum transactions per second are, are currently around 60,000, uh, which is pretty, pretty amazing if you look at it overall. And I want to kind of bu buzz down here also, who's building on the ecosystem? Let me jump and move, move that up a little bit, zoom it out. That popped it out too far. Let me think about if I can just zoom. Yeah, there you go. All right, so you can kind of see the ecosystem and how far it's going into the wallet side of things, the validators, the infrastructure side. Then you go over to the block explorers and dashboards. Then you get into the applications, uh, companies like Audius, has, who's been in there. Uh, and then you get into DeFi and then the exchanges themselves. They are definitely dense. And this is another reason that I think Solana has a really good opportunity of potentially really challenging ETH as an ecosystem for DeFi and also NFT, but also just some of these applications because the application side of things are gonna probably start really growing. If you just think about AMP, AMP is a good example of an application that essentially what they're trying to do is utilize, it's for the creator space uh, and mostly from the audio side of things. So think Spotify blockchain, and that would give you AMP. So these kinds of applications eventually will go down to the level and whether this is gonna invade podcasting 2.0 and that, that kind of connectivity on the Lightning Network, still a question or not of whether it will. However, I wanna show you this Solana Beach. If you guys have never been to it, just go to solanabeach.io. This gives you kind of a dashboard of what's happening on the, prof or on the protocol and on the project, including validators, transactions, their blocks, the tokens, and then of course supply. So you can kind of see what's happening around Solana at any given time, which I love this, uh, this particular setup. It really kind of gives you an insight to it in, in terms of their TPS. Right now they're just setting at a very low TPS. This is also an indicator. If transactions per second start moving up, this is something that could really end up in a kind of a pre-indicator to where that token might move because that usually means that you've got other projects coming on. You've got projects that are either already starting to play with it or starting to advance on it. And if that were to, to be the case and we start to see the movement of media and news and information start to move out into the space on Solana and those kind of projects, boom, there you've got a lift in where it's going. So in summary, Solana, is it capable of taking on Ethereum? First of all, the ecosystem is there just like Ethereum. Second of all, they're not overcoming some of the challenges that, they, that they've dealt with in blockchain limitations. That's number two. And number three is they've got a lot of money now. And the ability, and plus a lot of VC backing here, which is literally unlimited deep pockets of being able to take it to the next level. So this is a serious play for Ethereum and Solana to go head to head. Now, can they coexist? Sure, absolutely. Most likely will. I think though that where it will kind of come to at some point is where the developers, the application protocols, where they start to build on for the future of blockchain tech and where some of these projects are going. So if you like this, make sure and tune in over on the podcast. That's another place you can listen to TechPath. If you're watching here on YouTube, of course, we want you to subscribe, hit the bell, and make sure and share this video with someone who's either into crypto, e EVs, AI, et cetera. We love to kind of, uh, kind of give you guys all things on that forefront of innovative tech and where it's going, kind of the Kathy Wood model of where tech media is going. And that's not definitely what we're doing here on TechPath. All right, if you have an idea for a show, make sure and send that to us, which is just producer at revernetworks.com or hit me up on Twitter at Paul Barron. We'll catch you next time right here on TechPath. Thank <laughs> you.